Welcome to Insta Big Channel. Charlie Munger, that guy who sits next to Warren Buffett, speaks his mind out and gives some valuable advice time to time. He once said that if you spend less than what you earn and invest whatever you save, no one can stop you from being rich. Let's see how his advice ties to our video, 7 Tips to Becoming Rich. First and foremost, let's talk about the three-step process. First earn, second save, and third invest. While earning is the first step of the process, but no one in the world has become rich by earning more. What I mean by that is, we become rich by saving more, not by earning more no matter how much you earn, but if you spend everything you earn, then you can never be rich. Take it granted. Yes, please take it granted. You can never be rich by earning more. You can only be rich by saving more. Statistically, it's hard to save than to earn. Yes, you heard it right. So today, I am going to share with you the seven tips that will help you save more and more and more. That will help change your life. I'm sure people who watch it till the end will become rich. Don't miss your ticket to richness. But before we proceed further, make me a partner, a friend in your journey to richness. Subscribe to my channel and let's walk together in our journeys to richness. Let's get started with tip number one. Start early. Every day counts. Yes, it does. Let's look at a real life example that happened 35 years back. Two friends, Alex and Steve, used to work for the U.S. government organization. They were highly paid professionals. Both of them were 25 years old at that time, and both of them had almost the same salary. At the age of 25, Steve decided he would start saving $500 each month and invest that money into a reputed mutual fund for the next 10 years. And after 10 years of investment, he stopped investing in whatever he invested until then. He left with the mutual funds to be reinvested until he reached the age of 60. Alex spent his first 10 years lavishly and then at the age of 35 decided that he will invest $500 each month for the next 25 years until the age of 60. When they turned 60 years, they had withdrawn their money post-retirement. Luckily, both happened to invest in the same mutual fund, which gave an interest of 15% per annum average returns. Who do you think have received more, Steve or Alex? Remember, Steve invested $60,000 overall in 10 years and took money out after 35 years, and Alex invested $150,000 overall and took the money out after 25 years. Let me give you the answer. Steve received $4.2 million for $60,000 investment, and Alex received $1.3 million for $150,000 investment. The question is, why did Steve receive three times more than Alex? And when he invested $60,000 and whereas Alex received three times less than Steve, though he invested three times more, the answer is time. Steve started early. While he may have only invested $60,000 for 10 years, but he let the investment sit for 35 years, whereas Alex started late, he invested 2.5 times more, but he allowed only 25 years. It is not the money always that make you rich. Primarily, it's the amount of time that makes you rich as years pass by money compounds. Though Alex invested 2.5 times more money, Steve gave 10 years more time to compound, and compounding worked in favor of Steve. I term compounding as the first wonder of the universe. Now, just imagine, had Steve continued his investment for 35 years instead of stopping after 10 years, he would have been certainly rich by a couple more million. So, whatever time you have lost so far, consider that as lessons learnt, and trust me, you are not alone, let's start now on the investment journey. It's never too late once we realize how important it is to start early. Teach your kids the importance of starting early. This guidance alone will certainly put them on path to riches. Let's look at the next tip, which is tip number two, start small. Usually people fall into the trap of doubting what is the benefit of saving a little amount and they think they will start saving vast amounts of money in the future and will become rich. But trust me, guys, it's exceedingly challenging to save money later in life. The reason being, you are now used to spending money and cutting down on expenses to save money is a mammoth task. It's like asking a foodie to give up on eating Maybe a foodie can give up on eating for health reasons, but it's hard to cut down on expenses. If you cannot save now, you cannot save any time in the future. Saving has to be started now. If you pride yourself in spending and making people happy all around you, great. But that's not going to work going forward. Start with small changes. Start saving little by little. Think of saving as spending as if that is what makes you happy and get used to saving money. Forward this video to your near and dears who spends money without saving. Who knows? They may follow my advice. Coming back to the topic, the other reasons why it's hard to save later in life is because as you grow older, responsibilities increase, naturally expenses would increase, prices increase, inflation goes up, medical expenses go up, and there would be too little to save. 
So adhere to my advice, start early and start saving little by little. Every penny that is saved and invested counts. Let pennies make you rich. Tip number three, pay yourself first. Paying yourself does not mean paying for your expenses. It means saving money. If you have thought I'm giving you a reason to spend, nay, I'm not. Coming to the point, usually people spend first and save what is left, and that's a wrong thing to do. To be honest, you should save first and then spend the rest. You must have a target to save. Let's start with 10% of your monthly income, if not more, and then rest to spend on your monthly expenses. And slowly over time, you must increase your savings target from 10% to 20% and so on. Immediately cut down on expenses, especially the unnecessary ones. For those who think I still cannot commit to saving targets of 10% or so because my expenses are something I cannot avoid. Honestly, guys, not all expenses are a must of expense unless you make one. But let me tell you this. Trust your brain. When you put your brain in a problematic situation, it surely finds a way out. It hates problems, and with the help of billions and billions of neurons in it, it will solve them for you. It will tell you where to cut expenses, where to adjust and how to increase income. It will make you successful. Just throw some challenges at it. It's the biggest gift you have. Be grateful for that. Just outsource these sort of challenges to your own brain and it will work through it and gives you the solutions sometimes that are beyond your imagination and you will fall in love with it. Let's look at the tip number four, 10 seconds rule. Product marketing teams are powerful. They can trick you into buying anything and everything they set their mind on. Don't get into buying pressure and be a victim of the sales campaigns. For that matter, even if you visit a grocery store and before picking anything in your hand, think for 10 seconds. Consult with your brain and ask yourself, do I really need it? Is it a desire that I'm trying to satisfy? And most importantly, before you pick your next $1,000 premium phone, ask yourself, do I have a phone now that does the job? Do I really need one now? Can I buy an alternate one at half the price that satisfies my need? Or is it a peer pressure I'm succumbing to? And can this money be better used elsewhere? And your brain will give you answers. Trust your brain, not your gut, because sometimes guts may put you at risk, but your brain will never. Alternatively, sometimes, you know, it's better to stop visiting physical stores unless absolutely required and stop visiting e-commerce websites. And most importantly, stop watching all those product review videos, car review videos, and so on. And it's not them to blame. It's the human psychology that lures you into buying stuff that is not actually needed. And also stop caring about the discount sales. You are actually not missing on the discount sale, but the point that you are missing is that you will save 100% of money not spent. And if you really want to buy stuff at discount prices, there's always one or the other discount sale around the corner every month. Tip number five, zero outstanding on credit cards. Always maintain zero outstanding on credit cards. Never buy anything on installments, even if it's a 0% interest sale. Honestly, if you cannot afford to pay a lump sum amount on an item, then you don't deserve that item. Be whatever it may be. Sorry to be blunt, but that's the truth. My aim is to help you not to paint a rosy picture. Everybody and anybody can talk about earning money, but very few talk about saving money. And as I said earlier, earning money won't make you rich, but saving money does. So. I'm just helping you to save money. Use a credit card that gives you good offers, discounts, and money back to buy products and instantly pay back the credit card bills on the same day of purchase if possible. Always ensure you don't default and you are not paying any interest rates on credit cards because the moment you get into habit of paying interest, you are playing the game against compounding. And remember, I termed compounding as the first wonder of the universe, and no one wins against the first wonder of the universe. So say no to interest payments. The sole reason you need to maintain a good credit card is it helps build your credit ratings, which may come handy in the future. And most often, banks offer considerable discounts on their credit cards, and why do they offer discounts on credit cards? It is simply to lure people into using their credit cards all the time. And don't think it's because they care for your well-being, but on contrary, they deep inside their hearts have a genuine desire for people to default on timely payments so that they can levy interest charges, late payment charges, and all sorts of hidden charges, and that's how they make billions of dollars. Probability is they always have defaulters because not everyone is watching this video. That was exaggeration at its finest, I know. <laughs> anyway, jokes apart, banks win through statistics while they may lose some money by offering discounts to people like you and me who always pay on or before time. We are like the worst customers they have, but they always make money from those who default. So 
by maintaining a zero outstanding balance all the time, you are just using it to your advantage. But if you are an impulse buyer without control, the best thing for you to do is cancel your credit cards or at the least block them. That is how you can save yourself from misery. Tip number six, don't spend too much time on social media or don't waste time in the wrong circles. You may think, how is this tip relevant to getting rich? Let me explain how... In this era of social media, you will find a lot of fake rich influencers flaunting their expensive clothes, cars, and whatnot. You need to be vigilant and ask yourself, does this influencer share knowledge? Is this influencer helping me in any way? If the answer is no, stop following them. There are better people to follow. Follow people like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger or me, okay? Okay, that was a joke again. By the way, as of now, I don't have a social media presence except for this YouTube channel, but at least you could subscribe to my channel if you liked my frankness. But there are many good YouTubers who give good and genuine advice, and when you follow them, there is a great probability that it works in your favor. Last but not the least, tip number seven, targeted learning lifelong. The fact that I can say for sure you are on your journey to success is because you are learning some life lessons here that are priceless. But anyways, coming back to topic, don't drop out of the college just because you heard some random dude became rich after dropping out of college. There are thousands and thousands of people who dropped out of colleges and could not land in a proper paying job just because they did not have a proper degree and moreover. They do not come online bragging about it, and at the least no media talks about them because they are not rich. So don't stop your education on your so-called gut feelings and take on random dudes' useless inspiration to drop out of colleges. Be logical first. Okay, coming back to topic, after you graduate from your studies, earning comes first, next comes saving, and third comes investing, and fourth comes learning again. Oh, what did I say? Learning again! But why? The answer is simple. What you lent until your graduation is academic education. It just puts you in your first job that is it nothing more. Just so that you are clear, learning does not mean only academic education. Let's suppose you are in business. For you to earn more, you need to increase sales. For you to increase sales, you need to know the tricks and tips. And if you don't know those tips and tricks, then you need to learn them. And that's the kind of learning I'm talking about. The same goes for employees. Whatever it takes for you to earn more should be learnt. And hey, just because you are asked to learn, don't just go about learning random stuff all across internet. It won't help. Instead, do a targeted learning. If you are thinking what a targeted learning is, it's the learning you do to get the job done. And it's a lifelong process. You will have to keep learning all along the life. And that is how you cut through the riches list. This is how the cycle works. Learn more to earn more. Earn more to save more. Save more to invest more. Invest more to be a Richie Moore. Okay, I just made up the word Richie Moore to fit the rhyming. My whole point about tip seven with earning and learning is a cycle. So as long you don't break the cycle, no one can stop you from becoming rich and not even you. Those are my seven cents for you today. If you like this video, please let me know in comments. I wish you all the best. Hope to see you rich soon. Hey partner, before you leave, don't forget to subscribe. Remember, we had a deal to walk together on our journey. After all, what's this channel worth without you? You are special to me and I mean it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.